Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I am here today at Chestnut Ridge Park um, at a section of the park called Shale Creek. And I'm here with Brittany Bay Croyal, <laughs> and she's got camera in hand. And we are going to take you for a little field trip through this neighborhood. So firstly, um, I think I'd like to begin by hoping you're all well. And I'm sorry you can't be with me here because as you know, that would always be my preference. But since that can't be, um, we will do our best to take you on a little walk through Shale Creek. And of course, our focus today is on the Northern Hardwood Forest. So uh, Bay and myself will be making some stops along the way. I'll do my best to point some things out to you. And uh, we'll see if we can get this lesson in hand from afar. So I think the first thing that um, I would do with you is to let you know that um, this is uh, a part of Chestnut Ridge Park, Shale Creek. Um, in total, more than 1,200 acres in the, uh, what is the flagship of Erie County in terms of their park system. And uh, this place has always been rather secretive um, until a book came out a number of years ago called The Secret Places of Western New York or of New York. Uh, a friend of mine wrote the book. And ever since then, lots of people have been coming here. Um, its claim to fame is that it is the home of the Eternal Flame, which is um, uh, an area where natural gas comes out um, of a pocket in the shale, and uh, people keep it lit. It's behind a 30-foot waterfalls, and uh, I'm not sure if we'll make it down there today, but we may. But that's their claim to fame here. So, um, on our next stop, we're going to start to talk about the Northern Hardwood Forest and some of its unique characteristics, and then we'll see what we encounter along the way. So come take a walk with us. <laughs> Um, here at this first stop, um, I wanted to share with you some of the unique features of the Northern Hardwood Forest, something that really sets it apart from other ecosystems. And um, in, in that regard, um, I would like us to know the following. Um, number one, I think would be um, the dominant trees in the hardwood forest, something that you're somewhat familiar with already. And that is sugar maple, American beech, yellow birch, and eastern hemlock. So that certainly is a unique characteristic of our northern hardwood forest. Secondly, something which is very unique worldwide are the beautiful fall colors here in the northeastern United States. Nowhere in the world do we see such vibrant colors in the autumn season. Um, actually, the only other place that really compares to it is in East Asia. So if you go to Japan, um, in some cases you would swear you're in New England as you're looking at the fall colors. So that's the second very unique feature of these northern hardwood forests. And the third, I think, would be our spring ephemerals. And that means the wildflowers that grow in these northern hardwood forests early, usually beginning late March and through April and into early May, are very unusual. 
um, they actually have to go through their entire life cycle before the canopy is in place again. And so spring ephemerals, ephemeral means short-lived, and they're only above the surface maybe 50 days a year, and then they retreat back underground. So these are three very unique features of the northern hardwood forest. The dominant tree species, the colors of fall, and the beautiful wildflowers in early spring, the spring ephemerals. Okay, one of the things I wanted you to be aware of is that in the northern hardwood forest we have varied designations, different classifications. And up on this ridge here, um, we have a great many red oaks mixed in with our dominant species. And uh, we have a, a forest simply called a red oak northern hardwood forest as a result. And it just speaks of the fact that the red oak are dominant through here, which is not very typical. And um, it is here in the, what, what we call the Boston Hills that we find quite a lot of this red oak growing amidst the dominant species in the northern hardwood forest. So I just wanted you to be aware of that difference in classification. And we'll see other classifications as we move through as well. Yep. All right, right now, um, Bay is taking a picture of a rotting log. Um, and this is pretty unusual because this is a California redwood. And it pays heed to some interesting history in this area. Back in 1901, Buffalo hosted the Pan American Exposition. And there was a great big parade. And uh, you might also remember that this is the, uh, the time and the place where President McKinley was shot. And as a result, um, Teddy Roosevelt was inaugurated in Buffalo upon his death, the death of uh, President McKinley. But in any case, as part of the parade, they had a wagon with a big California redwood in it. And uh, ultimately, a slab from that tree became a part of the Museum of Science and was an exhibit in that museum. And once they set up their exhibit demonstrating the extreme age of this tree, which was over 2,000 years old, um, they had the trunk of the tree that they stored in the Museum of Science for many, many years. And then when they were cleaning out their basements, eventually they brought the remainder of that tree here um, because this place, Shale Creek, was once owned by the Museum of Science. And they simply dumped the trunk of the redwood here and left it to gradually decompose as you see it right now. Look behind me now. You will see a plantation of red pine. Now, we've seen red pine before at a number of our field trips. And there are numerous plantations here at Shale Creek. Now, I do want you to um, know the differences, if you will, between these conifer forests and the northern hardwood forests in various ways. Um, first of all, understand that when you see red pine in large numbers like this, it is a plantation. Red pine does occur naturally in New York, but in um, our northern areas predominantly. So if you go up into the Adirondacks, you'll see beautiful, extensive uh, red pine forests. But down in these areas, when you see the red pine, generally these are plantations. Now, 
the naturally occurring conifer forests, what we call the boreal zone, um, actually extends from Alaska across Canada, jumping down into the Great Lakes region, and then right up through New England. Um, it actually makes up upwards of 25% uh, of North America, making it the largest ecosystem um, in this environment. Um, and it is typified by um, trees, conifers, that are usually low growing in stature and tightly packed together. And uh, they live in an environment where the soils are very thin and wet and uh, infertile. And this is typifying the, um, the boreal zone. Basically, you're generally at an environment of 2,500 feet above sea level. And um, when you get up into those areas, the northern hardwoods cannot follow. Um, it's the soil that, that restricts them. So the sugar maple and the beech and the yellow birch and hemlock gradually drop out and then the boreal zone is typified by the conifers which are usually in our area red spruce and balsam fir. And so that's the native um, boreal zone. That's the native conifer forest. So down here, as I said, when you see large numbers of conifers, um, they're usually plantations. The native conifers that we will encounter will be white pine and eastern hemlock for the most part in our area. And we could talk more about that later. But as you see behind me, these red pines are gradually now in decline. Um, they are trees that are planted to regrow forests, oftentimes areas that were old farms. And the county and the state and the federal government wants to recreate forest environments and they put in these plantations. The pines grow quickly, but then after 60, 70, or 80 years or so, the northern hardwoods, more shade tolerant, gradually top them. And then once that happens, the pines go into decline. And right now, as we look through this area, we're in that place. So these pines have been overtaken by red maple and cherry and ash and as a result are slowly dying and are being replaced by these native hardwoods. And gradually the sugar maple and the beech will come in as areas um, continue to evolve. And the last stage, of course, is our climax forest, which is the northern hardwood forest. So you're seeing an environment in transition. And just know that these plantations will gradually be taken over by our native northern hardwoods in a very natural manner. And it does take about 70 years or so for that to happen. Okay, right now as we're heading down the trail, Bay is just giving you a panoramic view of uh, this forest. We're coming into a hemlock grove. Um, we are surrounded by a flock of chickadees and whoop, whoop, <laughs> we just had a white-breasted nuthatch fly in front of us. I can hear off in the distance a blue jay as well as a red-bellied woodpecker. Um, so right here in this spot, we've encountered the activity of four of our woodland bird friends. Here are more flying all <laughs> around us. These white-breasted nuthatches have similar coloration to the chickadees. 
And interestingly enough, when we find them, they're often on the trunks of trees and they walk down the tree upside down. So their niche is to look into bark exposed from the top for little creatures taking a snooze. And they're able to do that primarily because they have a toe. Oh, there's the red-bellied red -bellied woodpecker above us. I don't know if we'll be able to spot him, but we could hear him. But back to the nuthatches, they have a back toe which is exceptionally long with a long claw and it helps to stabilize them as they're moving down the trunk of a tree. So, uh, and it's not unusual that we would have the chickadees and the nuthatches um, flocked up together during the winter. They usually do hang out with one another. And it's not unusual to find with the, the woodpeckers with them also, downy, hairy, and red-bellied as well.